Hey, welcome to Engine Adventures. Today we've got the 2020 Toyota RAV4, but this is the TRD off-road version. And Toyota has done a lot to actually make this off-road worthy. It's not just a badge. Um, it's They've redone the suspension, added some off-road bits to it. The rear differential has dual clutches, I believe. I'll have to double check that. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So it can uh, do torque vectoring, essentially active yaw control, transfer power side to side. Uh, these rims are specifically for the RAV4 TRD Pro, or sorry, TRD Off-Road. And same with those tires, those are Falcon Wild Peak ATs. Um, it has the 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, and in this case makes 203 horsepower and 184 foot pounds of torque. And then it's paired with the eight speed automatic and uh, it does have the dynamic torque vectoring all-wheel drive and then the multi-terrain select and trd suspension so whenever you see the red suspension let me see if i can get a shot of it that is the trd there we go uh tuned suspension and then the same on the rear and it has uh, reworked shocks and the springs and everything are reworked also the bump stops it's been designed along with toyota's rally team uh, to help maximize its kind of rough road driving abilities and as i was cruising along here it was pretty stable well definitely really stable it was a little bit more harsh than the sequoia and tundra were in their trd pro forms but um, it, it still remained planted, handled very well, and we'll get into that in a minute too. One thing to pay attention to here is how much wheel travel there is versus how much the body's moving. So the wheels move quite a bit, but the body stays relatively stable, and that is because of the independent suspension. But there are a few times where it does bottom out. You can feel it hit the bump stops, and it's hard to see on camera, but uh, driving you definitely notice the short suspension travel on this. You can even see it fully articulate here where it lifts this back wheel off the ground. Alright, so on the left is a standard all-wheel drive system that's a transverse mounted engine in the front. And then on the right two images, this is the, the dynamic torque vectoring all-wheel drive <coughs> with uh, that the Toyota uses on this RAV4. And it uses separate clutches on the rear. Those uh, big gray pieces on the rear are separate clutches for each rear wheel. And then it also has a complete rear drive shaft disconnect. So it can disconnect the drive shaft when it's in two wheel drive so only the front is spinning and then it will engage the drive shaft and engage those clutches on the rear to transfer power to either side as needed. Basically it has a center locking differential 
uh, the equivalent of that and then also a rear locking differential but again it's through these clutches it's not an actual locker for either of these systems and let's see how it actually performs off-road So I want you to take note that every one of these drive modes is doing exactly what it should do. So the mud and sand mode is basically letting the wheels slip as much as possible. The rock and dirt mode will be the most aggressive braking on the spinning wheels and the traction transfer. So it should have the least amount of wheel spin. And then the snow mode was kind of in between the two. All right, so here we are. This is in rock mode and let me clear out of that so you can see how it's transferring power there and it'll show if i can get rid of that the wheels that's slipping you see that yellow flashing light now let me see if i can get it going again there it goes And it's showing you it's transferring more power to the other wheels than that one when it starts to slip. It's kind of a cool feature. We'll get a better shot of it going up this other hill. All right, this first one is just normal mode and also normal. So there's the eco mode, normal mode, and sport mode. But then there's rock mode, normal mode, and sand mode. So we're in the normal normal on both of them. So right now I have my foot all the way on the floor. The throttle's wide open. And where this vehicle struggles is with these really steep climbs where it's lifting a wheel in the air. It doesn't have the low end torque and there's no low range transfer case to be able to multiply the torque to be able to overcome the braking force that is applied to the wheels that are spinning. And so you can see it just kind of stalls out and doesn't have enough power to keep climbing. Even though it does a great job of transferring power to side to side, it just doesn't have the torque it needs to overcome it. And you can see here with just a little bit of momentum, it's able to have enough torque to be able to make that climb. And here we're going down just to show you what we have to overcome when we're going up this hill. I switched it back to normal mode there for the last try and it eventually just overheated the all-wheel drive system. Said it was going to two-wheel drive mode and needs a brake. So we found the limitations of the system. Uh, we can talk a little bit about while well, it's sitting here cooling off. We can talk about the uh, four-wheel drive and how it works. So my understanding of it is that there's a disconnect for the rear axle and uh, it's a 
a clutch pack, a hydraulic clutch pack so it can vary the rate that gets transferred to the rear. And then it also has individual clutches going side to side on the rear axle. So it can essentially lock the rear axle and um, give you three wheel drive, but uh, the system does pretty well. It did seem to struggle a little bit there. I wasn't expecting that to be overheating. Sometimes the brake base systems overheat, and this has a combination of braking the spinning wheel along with using those clutches to transfer the power, but there must have just been enough slip in the system to uh, be making those clutches slip and overheating the system. So it needs a brake. Um, again, still a capable vehicle. It works like all the other, or most of the other all-wheel drive systems that are similar to this as far as you need momentum. With a little bit of momentum, you can make it up most things. I mean, on this one, I just had to get up to five miles an hour or so, and no, I would make it up that. So I have one last thing. We'll go around the other way, and we'll uh, come down this hill, and we'll test out that downhill uh, assist or whatever they want to call it. And yeah, that'll be the last thing for the off-road section of this this video. Okay, we're about to go down this hill. Let's go ahead and hit the downhill assist. Brings up that button. And let off the brakes. My foot is not on the brakes at all. And you can see it tries to keep you at about one mile an hour. And the ABS is going crazy. But it's doing it. So I don't know how to adjust the speed on this. I mean, you can hit the gas and it will change it a little bit. And maybe that's how Toyota does it is you use the gas and the brake to change the speeds. But overall, the system works really well. Get down to the bottom here. Kept the speed low right where we wanted it and just did a great job there. So I wanna hear from you guys. What small crossovers do you think could outperform the RAV4 TRD off-road? Make sure to comment below, hit the like button, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.